Let's welcome in Todd Lewis, who is at the Players all week, reporting on live from the Players. Todd, how are you holding up after that stretch of TPC Sawgrass? <laughs> uh, I'm good. We had a Sunday finish, so, you know, unlike last year, it was awesome. <laughs> that is the biggest win in the business, is when we're done right. the Sunday finish. And Scotty, I mean, he snuffed out all the drama. We were hearing from his team on what makes him such a special player. What do you think makes Scotty an elite player? Well, mechanically, just like Ted Scott was saying, he is he has all the shots. I mean, you look at what he's done statistically, number one on the tour in strokes gain, T to green, number one on the tour in strokes gain off the tee. Uh, he leads the tour in greens at regulation. He's a clutch putter. He's got incredible hands. So mechanically, that foundation that Randy Smith built with him since he was seven years of age really suits him. But I think more than anything, to touch on what Eamon was talking about earlier, he is probably the most secure player on the PGA Tour. You know, I've heard players say to me that great golfers are the ones that play their best when they're at their worst. Now, Scotty, Scotty's worst game is probably better than some of the best games for some players on the PGA Tour. But when he hits an errant shot or he gets himself in a bit of trouble, there is no panic. There is security and confidence there is the next shot, and I think that is built from a great family, uh, a great supporting wife uh, who is encouraging, uh, also a very supporting caddy in Ted Scott. Um, I mean, he, he just has a beautiful, calm foundation of nothing rattling him. So, I mean, like, if, let me just say, if I'm on a plane and for whatever reason the, the cockpit gets overtaken by carbon monoxide – and somebody needs to land that plane, please hand the reins to Scotty Scheffler because he's going to land it calmly, cool, uh, you know, relaxing without any issues. So I, that, that's what I like about it. I'd probably go Maverick McNeely, number one in that hypothetical, but then Scotty Scheffler, <laughs> Scotty Scheffler, number two. And certainly not Terrell Hatton, <laughs> number three in that scenario. <laughs> Todd, we've seen players of this ilk get on hot runs before. You know, we've seen it with Jason Day over the years and Brooks Kepka, Jordan Spieth. Yep. Life can get complicated outside of the ropes and inside the ropes. You know, injuries, self-doubt, all of these things. Do you see, to Ted Scott's point earlier, do you see any weakness at all or any cause for concern that something someday might become a pothole for Scotty Scheffler? Well, well Eamon, we've been covering this game. There's going to be something that's going to be a speed bump in his career. It's not going to be perfect throughout his career. Uh, it's just a matter of how he handles it. Um, we've, you know, you mentioned Jordan Speed. He nearly won every major championship in 2015. I mean, I was amazed at, at his play and felt like there's no way this guy is going to fall off uh, the grid, but he kind of did. And that's golf. And that's nothing against Jordan Speed. But it took him a while to rebound and handle that. Um, I, I just think that Scotty has the great calmness and presence of mind and incredible support team that if he, when, not if, when he has a bit of a valley, I think he can recover quickly. I mean, you know, to the, Tiger's the most mentally strong person I've ever covered or worked with. And I'm not saying he is Tiger. But he's, he's incredibly strong in a different kind of way. Uh, and uh, his strength comes from comfort of who he is. And I think that's going to carry him a long, long way. Todd, what do you think will need to happen for the hype around Scotty Scheffler to level out with his achievement over the last 13 months? <clears throat> Well, that's a good question. I mean, it's, you know, he's, he's not the flashy type. Uh, you know, he's not a fist pumper screaming. He's not like Rory saying, come on. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. I, I think that all of those characters are wonderful for the game of golf, but I, I don't really necessarily think it's something that has to happen. Uh, I mean, if, you know, I, I can promise you, Scotty Scheffler would rather have more wins than more notoriety. Um, there's no doubt about it. Um, so, you know, it, it just doesn't, it's not important to him. Uh, you know, it's, he's, it, I, the thing I like about him, and I said this on live from last week, yes, it's important for him to be great at his craft. It's, he is living the dream of playing the game he loves, but it's not the most important. It doesn't define him according to Scotty Scheffler. It's more it's more critical for him to be a great person and a great husband, and I think that's why he's going to have longevity. 
Todd, there were a lot of storylines last week, including some unfamiliar names coming up on the leaderboard that we haven't heard from in a while. There was also <coughs> all the chatter outside of the ropes about all the changes on the PGA Tour. What made the most impression on you in terms of those storylines outside of Scotty Scheffler? Well, there was some, you know, I heard you guys talking about winners who didn't win. And, you know, I want to throw Jerry Kelly in there, the oldest to make the, the uh, cut at the players. I thought he had a, a great week, obviously. And Justin Rose told me, I mean, he had a top 10 finish. He said he played better at the players uh, than he did when he won at Pebble. Uh, and Min Woo Lee, I think he is erupting on the world stage. He's a DP World Tour member. He's not a PGA Tour member, but... And yeah, he shot 76 in the final group, but that's the biggest stage he's been a part of. He's young, he's 24, and he's going he's gonna to grow from that. But, you know, I do, I do and Eamon, you're right in the middle of this too here. I, I mean, there still is a divide out here on the PGA Tour in regards to these no-cut designated events. Um, I was taken aback when the tour offered up a players' meeting last Tuesday to everyone to put all the stats out in front of players to inform them to answer questions that only like 40 or 50 players showed up for that meeting that's that's less than half the field and so you know some of some of these players are, are already disgusted they didn't want to show up because they felt like it wasn't worth their time um i i still think there is is quite an undercurrent of um a resentment from some of these players but you know we'll see we'll see how this develops over a few weeks and months and Todd, I think some of the no-shows were guys who thought it's already been rubber stamped. What can I do now if it's already a done well, deal? Well, yes, but at the same time, I feel like if, if I talked to several players, and Eamon, I know you were there, maybe you did too, who felt that way but decided to go to the meeting anyway. But once they were given the information, were given uh, all the analytics, you know, left that room feeling better about the direction the tour is going and were more optimistic. I'm not saying that you know, you're going to change everybody's mind, but I feel as if you, ought to, you, you should get as much information as possible if you're going to formulate an opinion. And, and some players just opted not to do that. Yeah, always helpful to be informed. That's why we have Todd Lewis stopping by the show on golf today. <laughs>